Hey everyone, I'm Jamie Provines, and today I'm talking tri-tip, this fabulous cut of beef. Now, you may or may not have had this before. Um, you probably have in ground sirloin. If you've had a hamburger made with ground sirloin, you've had tri-tip. It usually ends up in that particular grind, but it's a shame in a way because as a full cut of meat, it's, it's really quite nice if you cook it properly. Um, the key is that you, you can't really cook it like a steak um, that is entirely over direct heat because the outside would just get overcooked and the inside would still be undercooked. So instead, what I'm going to recommend for you is to use a combination of heat. And that's why I've got my grill set up this way with the coals on one side. So this is a two-zone fire. We've got coals on one side for direct heat and no coals on the other side for indirect heat. And what I'm going to do with this is, after it's been oiled and seasoned and rested at room temperature for 20 to 30 minutes, I'm going to start by searing it right over the coals, in other words, over direct heat. And I'm going to cook it for probably about 8 to 10 minutes total, uh, turning it once until we get a nice color all the way around the, the roast or the steak or whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to slide it over to indirect heat and finish it that way. And this is how you get tri-tip, which often ends up as hamburger, to taste like a fabulous steak or a fabulous roast. So the tri-tip has been cooking for about 10 minutes over direct heat. Plenty of time to get some nice color. I don't want to leave it over direct too much longer, otherwise there's a tendency for the outside to get overdone. So I'd rather slide it over to indirect heat. Now, with the lid closed, I'm using a, a more even and, and gentler heat, um, which is going to cook both the inside and the outside, giving me the perfect doneness. So my tri-tip cooked for about 20 minutes over indirect heat, and I've let it rest here for about five minutes before I carve into it. Now, pay attention to the grain when you're carving. You can almost see it still that there's a, a grain or a set of lines running this way. So I want to cut across those to shorten the grain. The, the meat at the tip here, where it's a little bit uh, thinner and, and um, well, it's just smaller, so it cooks faster. This is going to be a little bit more cooked than the rest of it, so this might be good for the kids or whatever. And then as you get deeper into the roast, you're going to see it's going to turn redder and redder. The uh, thinner you cut it, the more tender it's going to feel in your mouth. So I want to get a few nice big slices out of the center of this. And I'm going to serve it today with a little fall salad here. This is a uh, pear and walnut and blue cheese salad that uh, I think is very appropriate for the season. And you'll note that the, as the meat sits there for just a few minutes, it's going to get redder and redder, and you're going to get a nice medium to medium rare. So there's a little tri-tip 101. Uh, it's the cut of meat that usually ends up as a hamburger, but remember it's not a hamburger and it's not really a steak either that you cook entirely over direct heat. It, re it requires two types of heat to do well. So sear it over direct and then finish it over indirect. It's called sear and slide.